Hello church, I'm glad to be able to share another devotional with you. Hope you had a great Easter celebration, even though it's difficult being away from each other right now. I wanted to share on the resurrection of Jesus, even though we just celebrated it. I want to share it's something we partake in. It's not something we just celebrate and forget about, but it's something we live into daily. And so I'm going to read from Colossians 3, 1 through 4. It says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So the first thing I want to show is how Paul sees that we've been raised with Christ. In Colossians 2.13, it says earlier, God made alive together with him. God made us alive together with him. We've been raised with Christ. Just as those who have faith in Christ partake in his death, and die to themselves, so we also partake in his resurrection and we're raised with Christ. Paul goes on to explain what, what this means and urges us to, because we've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So to seek the things that are above, what's above? Well, he says Christ is. Christ is above. And that's where he's at the right hand of God. So, so to think upon things that are above, to walk in this resurrection life, is to, as Paul goes on to say, set your mind on things that are above, on Christ, who's there. Looking upon Christ in all of his beauty, in all of his glory, in all of his love, his joy. Everything that's good is found in God. And so we set our minds on things above. And that's what Paul goes into saying how to do this, how to seek the things that are above. It's to set our mind on things that are above. So it's not an Eastern practice of meditation where you empty your mind, but you set your mind on an object, on Christ who is above, on God and all his attributes. You can do this in through reading the scriptures and just thinking about one attribute a day. You can do it in communion with prayer, in prayer with God. But this is what we're urged to do as, as we've been raised with him. Set your mind on things that are above. Doing this, Paul goes on to say, gives you power over sin. And it not only gives you power over sin, but it gives you power to walk in righteousness, in holiness, to clothe ourselves with Christ. So not only put to death our sin, but live in the resurrection life into his righteousness. So putting on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other, um, living in unity and love. And it's summed up in whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's, that's really the epitome of resurrection life. So what does resurrection look like, though, during this crisis? Well, you can see it in, in the whole chapter of Colossians 3. It's really a contrast of night and day. As I said, it gives power over sin, but also all that comes along with sin. Um, thinking upon the things of this world brings worry, brings fear, brings anxieties, uh, distress, darkness, and misery. And thinking upon things that are above where Christ is, we, we look upon God and we see peace and joy and life and love and goodness and so walking in resurrection life 
cause us to partake in that life of God. It caused us to be where we are, seated with Christ, resurrected with Him. And, and we've died to ourselves. We no longer live of this world, but our life is hidden with Christ in God. So I want to exhort you again to walk in this resurrection life by seeking the things that are above, by setting your mind on things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God.